Back, our guest tonight is a man who needs no introduction. He is on Moele Show, where the founder of Sahara Report is uh, convener of Revolution Now and uh, former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress. He was arrested uh, by DSS operatives at midnight on August 3, 2019, two days before a planned Revolution Now protest he convened, tagged Days of Rage. <laughs> Maybe that's what got him arrested. And he was charged with treason. Also, at another time, he was charged with Starburst, Cyber stalking and money laundering uh, for allegedly planning to overthrow the government. Today, Nigeria's federal government has uh, released a statement uh, saying that they are discontinuing uh, his trial uh, at the federal high court in Abuja. Um, of course, that's signed by Latif Fagbemi, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Omoyele Shore, um, good evening to you. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, do you um, now consider yourself a free man? I know I'm asking that question. Uh, no, I, uh, my freedom wasn't tied at any time to the charges. I knew that the charges were fake, they were concocted, and they were meant to silence me. So I'd always operated as a free man, even though they condoned uh, my life and ensured that uh, I couldn't travel out of Abuja for three years and uh, kept me in Nigeria in the last five, you know, four years plus now. Uh, but I never thought myself uh, as being inhibited in any way. And philosophically, I cannot consider myself a free man until uh, we're able to free up the space for development, progress, and uh, democracy in this country. All right. So you, you consider yourself free, but not free in another context. Um, how do you feel about the decision of uh, Tinubu-led federal government to drop the charges against you or discontinue the case, as they said? Um, do you think they, they just, uh, you know, believe that you were innocent? Do you have any good words for uh, President Bola Tinubu? No, I think I deserve an apology from him and uh, his political party uh, for the harm that was done to me, uh, done to members of my family, my children, my business, uh, for standing up for my rights, things that even Tinubu himself did when he was a senator in this country during the pro-democracy era. Uh, when he was at town, they were very mean, very disrespectful, and dangerously uh, almost uh, destroyed my life, uh, including, you know, uh, assassinating my brother. My mother is down with a stroke in the last four years. I haven't seen my children in the last four and a half years, and my wife, and they constantly harassed me, harangued me. They, attacked me you see it's you, you see uh it's on my face the police officer broke my nose in 2021 another police officer shot at me at close range with a riot gun uh, hoping to uh destroy me so all this were done to me they also would hire thugs to come and attack me physically in court i was abducted kidnapped in front of a judge i deserve not just an apology i, I deserve serious compensation for was done to me and i intend to take up uh, this seriously against them to ensure that they are prosecuted or uh, made to pay for the malicious uh, uh, prosecution and persecution that i faced okay. and i intend to do it in, in multiple jurisdictions in case they get away with it here i'm sure they can't get it away with it elsewhere and i'm going to deal with it i'm going to do this against some individuals like the former attorney general malami uh former president uh, buhari all of them that cooked up the, this crime against humanity, they will never get away with it, uh, oh. no matter how long it takes. Uh, do, do you see this as a victory for justice, or do you see this as merely you know, a political move by, by the administration? I was in court yesterday arguing with the judge to, <laughs> to strike out the case. It was, uh, the, the, the legal part of it was a sham. And I must uh, give kudos to my lawyer, Femi Falano, who from the beginning of this case made it very clear that they can't get away with this and he will get me out. And all the time, Professor Wale Shoyinka, who came physically to court uh, to be there, and he sent me a message today as soon as he saw this, that he knew this wasn't going to go anywhere. He, was, uh, he thought this was ridiculous that anybody even did this uh, to me. Uh, but they've all faced this type of things before. You know, I want to thank uh, my wife and kids, my family members, uh, two of my brothers who are lawyers who uh, worked very hard 
to ensure that this case was defeated in court. But at the end of the day, it was a disgrace to the legal system. I mean, you can imagine a judge allowing DSS to come and abduct somebody in her court, and next time she behaved as if nothing happened. And uh, you imagine, you know, how they couldn't present any witness except one who testified now in, in my in, in, in my uh, in, in, in support of uh, my rights. The judgments, you know, uh, given over the seizure of my phone, the lawless DSS refused to release my phone, even after judgments were given. Another judge in Abuja said what he did to me was wrong. They just didn't care. It was a political party that thrives in impunity. And that's why, you know, I take exception to anybody saying I should thank Tinubu for this. No, they should thank me for remaining, uh, you know, very law abiding, despite all what they did to me. All right. Um, uh, I don't know who said it, but anyway. Um, so, so uh, we know that you were you were abducted or you were arrested at midnight in uh, 2019. Your house was raided. We all saw the videos, the CCTV footage, and all that. How they broke into your house and whisked you away. And then uh, after your incarceration, when you were taken to court, the judge set you free, and the DSS tried to rearrest you in the court premises now this is footage of when they, they broke didn't into try your... to rearrest me they abducted me within the court premises within the, they brought out your guns and all that within the court premises then dragged you uh, remember your lawyers tried to shield you so these are footage of images or uh, this footage from when they broke into your house um i want us to talk about the dss for a moment what are your thoughts on this organization i mean personally i've been i've been arrested by the dss because someone wrote a petition over me or for something they had on radio and I was surprised that uh, what I thought was secret police, you know, CIA of Nigeria, uh, was, was um, settling a squabble over a petition about what I said on radio, you know, which was not what I expected such an agency to do. And I want to point to um, what Peter Funaya, or what the DSS through Peter Funaya said in 2019 when he faced uh, the press. They said that um, you were arrested for threatening public safety uh, and peaceful coexistence and social harmony in the country, pointing out that the data agency they pointed out that they were they were charged with the responsibility of managing, curtailing, containing, and eliminating threats against national security. Peter Funai also said that these threats include sabotage, uh, threats of subversion, threats of terrorism, and uh, ethnic agitation, separatist ag agitations, economic sabotage, and others. Uh, it says if quote if we are operating as a responsible security organization and someone is calling for a revolution in Nigeria, we must understand the meaning of revolution. It means revolt, insurrection, insurgency. It means forceful takeover of government. And we are operating a democratic system in Nigeria. Uh, he said, quote, Nigeria is not a banana republic and cannot suddenly be made one. What are your thoughts on, on the operations uh, of the DSS? Do you using your situation, your case as a, as a case study? Summary of it is that Nigeria it's a banana republic. Everything they did to me in this case, and they've done to you, they've done to citizens, is what you get from a banana republic, abducting people in the middle of the night, lying against them, uh, and presenting false evidence before judges to detain people for a prolonged period of time. And I must say this, and I'm uh, very ashamed of uh, Justice, just, uh, Justice Taiwo Taiwo, who allowed them to detain me with false information without even asking or trying to do some inquiry to be sure that I did a lie to me that I went to collect $100 million from Dubai. Turns out I've never been to Dubai before. <laughs> you understand? The judge just threw the keys at me, kept me in detention for 45 days. When that was done, uh, when he refused to renew it because it had become an embarrassment, he, you know, even I, attempts by lawyers to even get into review, he refused. He was just playing games. Now he's retired and he's living in Nigeria. Mm -hmm that they have all created and are safe, no, right. you know, a all terrible... Right. Oh, but I'm so sorry to inter interject, but we and have to go... Nigeria yeah. is a banana republic. This yeah. is a banana republic. This all doesn't right. get um, worse than th Thank you very much for your time. I, I don't know if your passport has been returned to you yet. Just quickly, has it been returned to you? They haven't returned my passport to me. They haven't returned my phones to me. They have not reopened my bank accounts that were closed illegally. And mm -hmm. like I said, I'm going to take legal steps. All right. Within you've not Nigeria. you've not seen your family for how many years now? I haven't seen them since July of 2019. Okay. And this is, by the yeah. way, tomorrow is my birthday, so you can take that as a gift. 
All right. uh, but you know, it's not over because right. the struggle has just commenced until we're liberated completely. Right. So, so as, as it stands, you can't even travel to go spend it, your birthday with your family. Revolution time, revolution now. All right. On my show, Ray, thank you so very kindly for your time. We will talk some more about this in the coming days and weeks, surely. And that's the size of our package right here, Politics HQ. It's been quite interesting this week. And of course, we'll return on Monday with more conversations on the latest in Nigerian politics. My name is Kofi Bartels tonight.